Hi, welcome to the latest episode of the Coaches Dugout podcast, the podcast for coaches by coaches. And this is uh, episode two of uh, the special series on IFT, which is the individual football training. And uh, the last time out, we had one of the founding members who is uh, Francisco uh, Matos, who is also called Kiko. And he's with us today again on episode number two. And uh, we've got uh, another founding member, uh, Mr. Pedro Hoyes, with us as well. And we'll talk to both of them, uh, of course, sooner and and, uh, rather than later, and we'll talk to them about the coaching aspects of IFT today in episode two. So uh, it's, it's a special uh, episode as well. Now, uh, let's revisit what we talked about in episode one, which is uh, individual football training. Why? What is it? And, uh, you know, and to summarize it, Kiko, you want to tell us what exactly is IFT again, so that we can revisit what we actually talked about in episode one. So um, first of all, thank you, thank you again for for this this moment to 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 share to, to share to share ideas and to, to speak about football. That is our is our passion. So EFT is in individual football training. is a training center focused on the individual development of the football players. It's a complementary work in which we look for the, the, the specific details of the players in order they can boost their, their performance. Imagine a striker that needs to, to improve the way he plays with the back to the goal, how, the way he protects himself, the way he can rotate over the defender, uh, the way that he can position himself between the lines, uh, his, his game awareness, the, the way that he decides, decides or the, the shooting ability, the power shooting, the precision, little aspects that we pick up the player and individually we work on their strengths, on the, the weaknesses, in order that he feels more comfortable. And as you know, a player uh, that feels confident and comfortable with this game, the, 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 all that he can provide to the team it's much. It will be a much better performance. So we we work with professional players like Bruno Fernandes, Alex Telles, Diogo Dalo, many others, and youth players from um, everywhere since six years old. In order, they 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 gain technic they gain tools, technical tools, and they understand how to use the tools. That is the tactical knowledge. Beautiful, Kiko. I think that was uh, nicely summarized as uh, of what uh, IFT is all about, and obviously it's individual training and and trying to uh, improve the, the the technique part of uh, players and and you know their individual skills. Now, let's talk about the coaching and what the IFT coaches bring to the table because I think at the end of the day it's the quality of coaching. You know, everywhere we go, we want to have the best quality, especially in, in the coaching bit. And I think that's very, very uh, important. So let's focus on what we can expect from the IFT coaches. Um, Pedro, you were a former pro goalkeeper, right? And, uh, and, and right now, you are the methodological coordinator for goalkeeping and IFT and a personal goalkeeper trainer since 2009. Now, tell us about your experience a little bit about uh, being a goalkeeper coach. Uh, and I think you've been a goalkeeper coach since 2009. Tell me a, a little bit about your experience. Hi. Hi, everyone. First of all, thank you for the, for the opportunity to, to speak a little bit about us. So, uh, yes, since 2009. Uh, it's, it's a lot of time now already. Uh, <laughs> I, start, I started... Uh, with the youngers and very fast I achieved the professional in two years I was with the professional teams um, and then because I'm a little bit different when I work out um, the, the players start to, to search for me to work with me uh, outside the clubs so the, the personal coaching uh, arrives in 2011 right. with professional players Right. so after that it was a it was a pass. So uh, I, I was a colleague from from Kiko in in the university. So we speak, we share ideas, we share everything. So I have the methodology about goalkeepers. We have about the players and over two. So we mix all together, and we we 
we make this. We make uh, IFT. <laughs> Andrew, I want I, I want to ask you something. You said just now that you you brought something different. You were different. What is so different about yeah. you, Pedro? I, I, well, are, you one, are, uh, are you one of those goal, goalkeepers who are damn crazy? <laughs> I'm crazy too. I'm crazy too. Uh, because all the goalkeepers must must be a little bit. Uh, it's a different position yeah. in everything. Even the rules are different for us. So uh, the training must be different. Um, they must work out with the team, of course. This is no doubt. They, work, they need to work out with the team. But the best goalkeepers make best team, the best teams. If you look to the best teams in the world, the, the best goalkeepers are there. Um, and when a, a good goalkeeper is missing, something is missing for the team. Uh, right. And this is everywhere. Right. Not only in Singapore, not only in Portugal, everywhere. Everywhere is like this. So I'm different because I look to details. I look to different details. I'm... I, I stay crazy when when everything is not like I like, you know. If it's not what I want, they they need to repeat and repeat and repeat. And sometimes they say, "Yeah, why? Why? This is this is so small. Is is a small thing?" And I say, "Yes, because it's on the easy balls that you miss, never on the hard ones. So you need to work out the easy ones." You, so, I, I think it's safe to say that you are a perfectionist. I think that's the word you, you, yeah. you're you looking for. You yeah. are a perfectionist. And I, and I tell you what, I, I totally agree with you because, you know, back in, in, in back home or when, I, when I'm, I'm home right now in Singapore and I do uh, commentary and, I, of course, I coach as well. And, you know, sometimes when you do commentate and you talk about a goalkeeper, for example, I, I feel that, you know, sometimes what I say may be wrong because I'm not a, a specialist goalkeeper or even a goalkeeper coach. And, you know, sometimes what we say may be a little bit uh, wrong. So you, you're very right because it, it is in the details and we don't have that specific knowledge, especially in the details to actually say that, hey, you know, the goalkeeper should have stood here. The goalkeeper should have, you know, stood further in front, you know, things like that. Yeah. And I think you are very, very right. You know, I think it's in the details and you, 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 you're totally spot on there. Uh, before we talk about what actually can be expected from a goalkeeping training, right? I just want to ask Kiko, you know, the coaches in IFT, how do they get certified in the first place? Do, do you all have an in-house uh, program that, that, you know, all uh, IFT coaches have to go through? Yes, yes. Yes, that's, that's uh, mandatory. Mm -hmm. So uh, since uh, 2013 that we've created our own methodology, Met methodolo methodology which... Every every coach, every EFT coaches must must attend a coach education. So they have all the coaches have a two months period of coach education. This is theoretical and practical. A first initial part in which we pass all the funda the, the the content all the fundamental fundamentals on the foundations the foundations, the, the foundations on the on, on in the theory in the theory okay uh, and after that uh, we pass to the practic the practical part the practical part in right. which they follow they, they they attend and they assist uh, the the more experienced coaches right. and then they start step by step having the opportunity to to manage the sessions but it's a, a two months two months period um, and for us it's very very important because uh, and i'm a coach as well and for us it's it's very different to be a coach in a team and a coach in our methodology because it's what our our and we have this this analysis uh, we say this this a lot of times is what our eyes can see what are we able to see when we are a in training a team? We are we have a different perspective because we are analyzing and seeing global and tactical uh, content, right? Uh, uh, global things on the game, how all the team position the, themselves, how the players need to interact with themselves. This is our vision as a coaches, but in the individual code, uh, in the individual. In our methodology, let's say yeah. that our eyes uh, uh, needs to see different things. They need to see the player, what the player is doing bad, how he, he's putting his knee, his body, how he puts the shoulder, why he's shooting 
uh, how we, why is the reason for the the the, the lacking of, of precision or or the power or these little details understand so brilliant for us it's very important to to um, cap put the, the 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 coach capable of having this kind of vision and having this kind of vision and as well being able to interact with the player because it's an individual session or a small group session in which the 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 the, the quality of the intervention of the, the coach the, it's very very important the quality right. of the feedback the quality of on the communication and imagine i am i'm i'm i have a training session imagine with bruno fernandes and the next day he will go to alvaro we cannot we cannot have different uh, communication yep yep so the communication the language let's call it the language has to be has consistent to be exactly, exactly exactly imagine if, to give you an example in a small group session even the 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 volume on the feedback we have that defined mm. on imagine on the initial part of the training the volume of the feedback is huge right. then this starts to 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 lower the volume uh, and the, the let's call it the quantity of feedback of the intervention because we want at the end the player to be able to decide for himself yep. so imagine to 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 for us to teach to teach for to help the player to learn and so and to learn what he's doing correctly and to uh, to do the movement as yeah. technically as we think that this uh, should be made and at the end our the quantity of information is lower because we we need that we need to know that the player has learned the movement and knows when how and where to to do it this to mix up with the decision making so that's several things that we 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 have in our uh, methodology in order to have a strong identity and be powerful on our our sessions oh, you, you know from judging from what uh, kiko has said uh, pedro I, I don't think uh, many team coaches can be individual coaches just because just looking at the details of you know players like you said you know uh, players shoulders players knees where do they position themselves and things like that so the technique part not not many can actually do that now i want to ask pedro what are the the the, the the tools needed as an IFT coach to succeed as an IFT coach. You know, what, what are the, do you need, do you really need to have the ability to demonstrate? Do you need tactical knowledge? What is it exactly that an IFT coach um, needs to, 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 to be an IFT coach? So um, the ability to demonstrate is not, is not mandatory because uh, I can explain even yeah. if I can do it. Okay. I can explain and I can correct the movement even if I can do it. Um, okay. Th this, of course, if you can do it, is better because you can show the player and everything. And with the practice, we almost can do everything. Yeah. Of course, uh, at a slower speed, but we can do it. Um, but this is is not mandatory. To, how to is not mandatory. Is uh, how to teach, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, but how to do it, no. Yeah. Um, of course, another thing is a passion about training sessions because it's completely different, as you said, to be coach uh, for a team. Uh, but the, the stretch coach is a guy that is focused on that too. Mm. The goalkeeper coach is focused on the goalkeepers. So the individual training must be done by a professional of individual training. So yeah. I think is a spot on the, on the technical team that is start to, to open Mm. That in the future uh, is a must-have on a, mm. on a, on a, on a board. Like for example, you have Liverpool that already have some there, some guys there doing that. So having, uh, the best teams a throwing coach, right? Uh, for example, even that, yeah, even that. For example, yes, right. yes, even that because club don't have time to do it. Correct. Uh, and and the, the life of the professional teams is like. Is running all the time, playing three in three days. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very important that the player take care of, the, of himself. Right. So this idea of individual training in football, uh, if you look to, to the American the American example, mm. they do it in N NBL, in NFL, NHL, mm. in the hockey, in the, in the basket. Everywhere, they do it for about 30, 40 years, 50 years ago. 
yeah. because because they know that to be best in in the overall in the team you must be good individually right. so the personal training is something that they have for about i don't know since since ever so yeah. w- what we mean is this the individual training uh, will be uh, is already but it will be the difference between the the good and the very good player perfect i think that's a that that's a perfect perfect summary you know i i think with the added individual training it will make prove to be the difference between an average a good and obviously an excellent player very good point there yes very good point now i, I just want to talk about this as well you know it is safe to say that ift is going to improve or individual training is going to improve a player you know can i ask you guys something anyone any, anyone can answer this right do you see something that is missing in especially kids nowadays that you see that you know they they need to improve especially individually well, what what is it that you know you think that needs to be improved especially nowadays anyone uh, freedom and creativity aha uh-huh. right because uh, that's and we <laughs> see that uh, a lot the the coaches for what we 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 see here the coaches want to to model the young kids on their on their game or the game yeah. that they want to create they see yeah. man city play <laughs> they see barcelona and they want to create this style of game with instead of giving the players tool for them to grow mm. and the, we, we believe in that to 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 give is like education we 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 give the the tools for them to learn them for themselves mm. and then each player creates his own specificity specificity you understand yeah. Yeah. and he will be able to adapt himself to every kind of every style of game yeah and uh, right now we see uh, teams in training that is uh, a passes to b b passes to c c passes to d and d crosses makes a cross but the game is not this yeah the game is uh, and uh, uh, several it's random it's it, random yes uh, it's a group of mo- of unpredictable moments complex is very complex yes but is ev- all the time is unpredictable yeah and on this chaos the player needs to be able to understand what's happening yeah. and understanding what's happening he's, he needs to be able to uh, execute what his mind the information that his mind is giving yeah. uh, giving him and um, that's how we th- we feel that uh, we should uh, coach the kids and that's uh, what what's lacking is that we want the player to play like this no the player doesn't in need the, to play in like the, this in the, the goalie is is like f- formatting the goalkeepers to play with the feet mm. but they forget they forget to save the balls yeah Ah, yeah. they are very good playing as a back defender. Perfect, starting the the the, the attack, but when the ball comes to to save, they don't save it because mm. they don't train it. Right, so, right. I I just uh, wanted to ask you, Pedro. I wanted to yeah. ask you what is missing in today's goalkeeping, and 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 is that, that your answer? What I feel is yeah. this. What I feel is that they they are lacking in in defending the ball. Right. They are better playing with the fields now, <laughs> uh, but. But saving the ball, yeah. saving the saving, making 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 saves that gives points mm. is is not for everybody, you know. And the the the, the feel that I have is they are lacking like techniques. They are not good in in the in the laterality. They don't they mm. use it only only one side is good. The other side they forget it because it's mm. not good. That we don't need to work out. Um, a lot of these details that makes a different goalkeeper. Normally, I say to the goalkeepers, save the easy ones, grow your confidence, and then the hard ones will come. Because if you make mistakes in the easy ones, you never catch a hard one, never. So, so let's let's focus on the easy things, on 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 the balls that the goalkeeper can control, and then yeah. the others will happen. That that is uh, excellent advice, and I think any goalkeepers who are listening, goalkeeping coaches who are listening as well, this is important, right? Do the easy ones right first before you can actually, you know, and the confidence will grow, and you can do the hard ones. And you know, I think you are very right, right? Everybody wants to be an Edison now, you know, pass out from the back, 
pass out from the goal line, you know, things like that, and and yeah. they forget they forget about you know the the other primary uh, job, uh, excellent stuff. And I think going back to what Kiko said, you're right about the freedom and creativity because right now I, I totally agree because what we do see sometimes is you know not sometimes most of the times uh, don't dribble pass 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 but you know the, the dribbling part is gone you know how the players uh, don't have the freedom to beat players take players on you know and I, I think it starts at, at a, a very young age as well and a very good point uh, Pedro what can we expect from a goalkeeping individual training session how long usually does it take maybe okay I, a 12 year old boy comes to you how long does a session last uh, a typical session last and how uh, what is a typical training session like so um, the, the session will have one hour yeah. every time, right. uh, even for the players, for the goalkeepers, it's the same. Okay. Normally, I say to them, one hour if you, if you, if you can take it, uh, <laughs> or, or just 20 minutes. Right. I, I say to them, it, it can be 20 minutes. If they are good, perfect. perfect. Okay. Okay. Uh, what I mean is that they need to be focused on the training mm. because of the details. And yeah. normally I start every time with the same. Mm. Even all the individual sessions starts with the same. Is the the relation with the ball, the ball yeah. easy, the, the easy ball on the front, like here, mm. on the chest and on the ground. Mm. We start for from three, these three, and then from from this we grow. Yeah. And then we grow. Um, we look to the goalkeeper. This goalkeeper is better, for example, is very good on the on the saving on saving balls on the floor. Yeah, uh, but the middle balls he cannot catch it. Okay, so let's do everything because I pass for everything every time. But I focus on the main. The main is the middle balls, so I will work out. If right. the goalkeeper is is not confident to to come out for a, a cross, mm. normally I look to him and I say, okay, let's start. Can you catch a ball? Yes. Okay. If you can catch a ball, now we start to work out the crosses. Because sometimes the parents come with eight, nine, ten years old and say to me, ah, "My kid don't, doesn't doesn't do crosses," and mm. I say, "Yes, it's normal. Even the professionals fail on the crosses. So why a kid with ten years old uh, must come out on a cross and catch the ball? They yeah. don't know how to catch or how to punch. How do they know how to, to go to a cross? So first, teach them to catch, teach them to punch, give them tools mm. so we can take their own decision if if they can." can go out on a cross or not. And this right. is true everywhere. All the goalkeepers that are confident come out on crosses and catch them. Right, right, right. This, this is normal. When a goalkeeper is like on confidence, the team is like on confidence, the goalkeeper don't come out on crosses. This is normal. Brilliant, brilliant. This is transversal. This is everywhere. So, Great. Uh, Kiko and uh, Pedro, do you think, um, you know, I, I think every one of you guys, including Alvaro, who's not here today, uh, you guys have your own strengths, right? And your weaknesses, obviously. Do you guys complement each other and form a very strong IFT unit? You know, I think do you all, you know, talk to each other and, you know, and do you all, do you all even uh, know that, you know, there are certain weaknesses in yourself and, you know, you try to work on them or how, how does this work with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> normally, I say, normally, I say that... Uh, yeah. that yeah, normally I say that uh, the the good thing about uh, we are uh, we are three. The good yeah. thing is that if to this if if to take the decision, the other one just shut up. It's easy. <laughs> so if one is not agree is is not agreeing with something, uh, it's easy to to solve. So, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so but we are very complementary because. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Kiku is very strong with with the connections with, mm. with um, the, the public, the outside public. Our yes. is very strong in the organization of of the of the counting and everything, the bills okay. and everything. And I'm most uh, I, I'm a seller, and I'm and I'm a guy that is more dedicated to the marketing and to the image right. and everything. So we are very complementary. So it's, it's, we work well together because of this. Beautiful. Kiko, anything to say? Or you oh, don't yes. agree? No, no, no. no. <laughs> the, the, the good thing is uh, along the years that, uh, just like Pedro said, we have, uh, we complement each other. Mm. We have, we are, we have the three, we, are, we have different personalities. Yeah. Uh, we respect a lot uh, our decisions and our opinions. And we've, uh, each one of us has 
special. Um, it's not special. It's uh, our uh, imagine our tasks on mm. the on the company. Uh, Pedro uh, takes takes care of more than the financial part, the, ma the marketing part. Yeah, I have more the the international relations and uh, the methodology, the mm. training methodology. And Alvaro is more focused on the all the organization, on the the, the accounting, the uh, on the the programs, uh, organizing the and administrative part. Yeah. Uh, but the good thing is that we have here around 30, 32 coaches uh, working with us. And they, uh, we've created, um, a, how do you say, a, like a family environment. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 they feel the passion that we have from, mm. uh, we, uh, with the FP. They feel and they leave that passion with us. Nice. And that's why the... The, that's why the even the trainings when you, we come, you come to the trainings is different when we have like everywhere if you enter some uh, somewhere uh, like a store or a restaurant and you feel a good energy a good vibe yeah yeah the feelings is completely different and yeah. honestly I think that is one of our strengths is the the environment that uh, we've been able to 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 create. Uh, to create with uh, all, all all of the staff, the staff, nice. and with the board, of course. Nice, well, and, and nicely said. And you know, I think you're right in terms of having a good feeling when you first step step onto the pitch or step into the academy. I think that's very good. Now, you know, IFT. Before we go, IFT is making its way around the world, right? And and the question is, I have for you guys is because quality is of utmost importance. You know, in terms of the quality of the coaching, how do you make the quality of coaching around the world consistent. That means e even if you go to Singapore, for example, Nick's, you know, the quality of the IFT uh, coaching will be this will be similar as if we are in Portugal, for example, right? So how do you make this uh, consistent, uh, Pedro? Well, um, the first thing is we go there, yeah, everywhere, right? We 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 must be there. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, um, three of us must be there. Um, and then uh, every every business that starts uh, around the world must have a Portuguese coach, must have someone uh, that already understands all the methodology, all the, mm. the, the dynamics, everything. Yeah. And then is the same basic from here is uh, coaching education, mm. and the, only the guys that fits can work with us. The other ones can't. So. It's a process. Uh, mm. Of course, if we start in Singapore, uh, we cannot start with 100 players. Yeah, uh, we need to start with with uh, with the the, uh, the limits that okay that we 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 must have because yeah. of of the staff. Mm. But to grow in Portugal, when we start, we have three. Now we have 30, and we give one one 1,800 hours per month. So. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's huge. Yep. Uh, so it's the same as a process. Uh, you guys must come, must do the education, must learn, must understand right. how we work. And then, and then it's, uh, the quality will be there for sure. Brilliant. Uh, you know, you, you, when, you, when you say three of you guys must be there to start off with, I'm hoping to see you guys when you come to Singapore soon. Of you course, know? Yeah. Uh, of course. Let me reinforce one thing. Yeah. The, the most important is like, just like you said at the beginning, the most important and for us is mandatory is mm. that in every moment that there is an EFT session, it has to be excellent. Uh, the player needs to feel at the end that, oh, this, this, this training is, is different. I, I, I've learned it. And uh, on the, our international travels and then having the steps to, to implement our, um, our structure, imagine in Singapore, that's why we have here um, right now 32 of 35 coaches. Yeah. And 30% uh, of the coaches are waiting, are here uh, getting hours of training. Yeah. Imagine we have two coaches in Singapore mm. that uh, they are, they had the opportunity, but to, they have the opportunity now to be in Singapore, but uh, they have uh, three years experience, no, four years experience training working in eft so yeah. they were prepared 
to this kind of um, uh, challenge. challenge and that uh, challenge and that's what will happen all the time imagine united states uh, to go to arizona or to yeah. i'm i'm making i'm uh, uh, i'm talking about the future Th these steps will be for coaches yeah that are with us uh, that are waiting for this opportunity but they are ready for this opportunity and they will be able to when they uh, uh, are there training and working to to pass and to show the EFT essence that's the most yeah. important uh, you know, after listening to you guys talk about, especially about the quality of the coaching and you guys being here in Singapore, I, I, I really do hope that, uh, you know, Singapore coaches do uh, have an opportunity to join you guys. You know, I think they would be, you know, jumping at a, at a chance to join you guys and obviously to, to, to keep up with that, that intensity and of course the quality of the coaching and I uh, hope to see you guys very, very soon. Now, before we go, any last words from you guys uh, regarding you know, the, the, the coaching bit of IFT, uh, maybe something that you want to say that you've left out, uh, you know, especially uh, to the people in Singapore, especially, you know, and, and obviously you guys are coming down um, in June, I think. Yes, yeah, in June. Uh, we'll be talking about that in episode three. But yeah, any last words? Uh, just about the, the, the last point about yeah. the coaches. A uh, very important thing is that the coaches that learn with us understand that this is, um, another coaching opportunity, not uh, passing through this to become a head coach. Mm. Head coach is a head coach, the goalkeeper coach is a goalkeeper coach, and the individual training coach is the individual training coach. And if they understand that this is another path, another, another way to grow the career, they will understand that they will become better and better on this, on this essence mm. and on, on this necessity of the teams and the future will be brighter for the individual technique right, uh, coaches. Right. So they need to understand is uh, uh, another path, you know, to, to go there. Uh, <laughs> You know, I think you, you, I said the last point, but you know, when we talk about football, we can go on and on. You know, something just cropped up into my head right now, you know, as you were saying that. Do you think there is a place for an individual coach for every single team in, in for example, it, in Singapore? It's a, it's a must have. Right. It's a must have. Right. They need to understand this is an, uh, uh, another tool. Mm. Of course, there are companies like ours that can help the clubs. Mm. We help the clubs. We, yeah. we go to the clubs and do this kind of work. If yeah. they don't want to get one one coach there doing this, no problem. Mm. They have us or, or others like us. Uh, I don't imagine that there are others like us, but okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be in the future someone copying or trying to copy our, right. our, our ideas. So, right. um, but we have the place. Um, we have yeah. the place and we don't, we don't, uh, we don't steal players from the clubs. We yeah. don't, uh, we don't trans uh, with with the transfer players from here to there. No, we only uh, um, increase the quality of the players of the teams, and of course the teams will grow because uh, the individual yeah. is better. The, the 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 quality of the of the group will be better for sure. I think I think just to summarize this, I think at the end of the day, it is all about. Uh, a win-win situation for coaches as well as for the players as well as for the clubs because at the end of the day of if, if, you, if you do not get quality players then the clubs will suffer so I think at the end of the day I think we are all just in a big very big uh, ecosystem trying to help one another you know I think that's the most important thing and and yeah. I think that is uh, perfectly said from uh, Pedro uh, and sometimes I say just to finish yeah. sometimes I say that uh, if you if you put a player in the level that a club, a lower club can sell it. Oh, yes. So you win because you have the best player and yeah. then you win because the player will be sell mm. and, and, you, and you get the, the money because money makes the, the clubs run True. Uh, and, and work so um, and improve. Yeah. So it's a win-win and a win situation because in the end, if you yeah. give, give the tools to a player, more of them will get there and more yeah. of them will will get paid and this is, is, is it's yeah. a, a circle yeah great uh kiko pedro thank you so much for being on episode two of the ift special uh it, it has been a pleasure i think eye-opening as well you know talking about the, the 
the coaching bit, you know, I think in, in episode one, we talked about the methodology a little bit, what it is about. And now I think we're going deeper. And I think people who are listening to this and watching this as well will get to know exactly what, you know, it brings to uh, the, the benefits it brings to players, to clubs, to, to coaches itself. So thank you very much. Now in the, the next episode of the Coaches Dugout uh, IFT special, we'll be talking about... Uh, the IFT camp in Singapore, which is going to happen in June. We're going to talk about what's happening uh, in the camp, uh, how many coaches will be there, the ratio of coaches to players and things like that. It will be a, a, a very good uh, episode as well. Uh, so in the meantime, I will see you next uh, next time on episode three of the IFT special on the Coaches Dugout podcast. Cheers. Thank you Cheers. Very much. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.